So there was a father who had three sons that lived with him on an island. And the father was wealthy and he had a lot of money. Now the first son was a really, I mean this is the youngest son we're talking about, this is the most loyal son, the son that he loves him the most, the most obedient son. And then he has a second son which is very disrespectful, very mischievous, and he only turns to his father when it comes to uh, time for money. So when he needs money, he comes to, and turns to his father. The third son was a complete rebel. I mean, this kid gave his tr- parents a really hard time. And they did not get any pride from him, and he would constantly make their life miserable. Now, the father got older, and as he was lying on his deathbed, he realized that two-thirds of his money are going into the hands of his two older sons, which he knew they're not going to use his money appropriately. And only the youngest son, the one that is most loyal to him, is going to be the one that's going to use his money, you know, according to his will. So he had to come up with a plan on how to make sure that all the money will go to the kid that's going to use it wisely. And after much thought, he finally came up with this brilliant idea. He calls over his three sons and he says, you know what I just did? I took all my assets, I took all my money, and I placed it in a faraway island. And we're going to make a race. I'm going to give each one of you a means of transportation. Each one of you are going to get a nice boat. And whoever gets to the island first with all the riches and all my money and my jewels and the diamonds is going to have my wealth. And uh, you know the rest of the two other two are going to get whatever remains. But the person who gets there first, the kid who gets there first, is going to get most of it. So, okay, he brings over the, the oldest son, the most wildest son, and he says to him, I have for you a yacht. Beautiful boat with a party, you know, a party boat, a bar on top. And he's like, you can bring all your friends along if you want. And he gives him the keys to the yacht. And he's so excited. He gets on his yacht. He invites all his friends. And they get in the boat. And they're all reveling. And they're all getting, you know, blitz. They're drinking. And they bring all the alcohol onto the boat. They're really having a, a party. And then he calls over his second son, the middle son, which is also problematic. And he tells him, look, I have for you a boat as well. It's a sailboat. He gives him a sailboat. It's a nice, beautiful sailboat. It's okay, not bad. He likes to relax, take it easy. He gets on his boat with his martini and his polo shirt. And he's sitting there, you know, enjoying his, his, you know, his martini. And then he goes over to the third son. So the third son is like, okay, he's going to give me the best boat, right? The, the speed boat that goes like 500 miles per hour. I'm going to get there first. I mean, I am his like most obedient child after all. He's like, okay, dad, come on, let's go. Where's, the, where's, the, where's my boat? He says, oh, for you, I got a rowboat. He's like, a robo? He's like, yeah, a robo here. And he takes out the oars for him. And next thing he knows, he, he hands him over the oars. He's like, seriously? Oh, you're giving me a robo? Okay, this is, this is like April Fool's, like a joke. Okay, this is, the joke is over now, right? Okay, where's the real boat? No, no, this is it. This is the boat you get. So he's not going to ask any questions to his father. And he gets on his boat and he's all confused. And there he has this bu- beautiful big yacht next to him on one side. And on the other side, he has this, this beautiful sailboat. And he's sitting on his little robo. And they're like, I need Mark, get set, go. And now they're racing to get to this island. And he's going as hard as he can. And he's pushing. And then he had this other kid who's going like 120 miles per hour on his you know, 90,000 uh, horsepower boat and his yacht. And the other guy is just relaxing and he's just drinking his martini and the winds are doing all the, job, all the work for him and it's pushing. And this goes on for some time. And this kid doesn't give up. He just keeps going. He said, my father said, this is the boat I'm going to get and this is the boat I'm going to make the most use of. And he keeps pushing and he keeps striving to get to the island first. And then at some point, the oldest brother who's sitting on his yacht, at this point he's completely drunk, he sees his little brother over there, you know, pushing through the waves and through the current and trying to get to the island first. And he says to his friends, look, 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 that's my brother over there. And he's like, let's have some fun. So they start circling around his boat, you know. When he starts circling around the boat, the waves start to pick up and then you see the waves crashing out to his boat. There's waves coming out to his boat, into his boat. And he's flipped over and he's trying to get back. The neighbor, this kid is trying to get back and managed to stay afloat on his boat. He somehow manages to get back on the boat and they're like laughing and they're going in circles. Now, how much fun can you have flipping over a boat? At some point, they got bored of it. So they decided, okay, let's continue and they go zipping down the ocean. And the other guy is still sleeping. He's up to his fifth dream already. He's still up to his, t- his 20th martini and he's having a good. All right, he's doing good, everyone's fine. At this point, they're still going. And now, this kid is like, this youngest kid, the really good kid, he's just, I don't understand what my father is doing. I mean, is my father confused? Like, did he mix me up from my other brothers? Here I am, doing everything I can to be as loyal as I can to my father. I did everything, I obeyed every single one of his will, of his commands. And now he comes along, gives me this boat. I have blisters in my head. My neck is all red from the sun. And I just can't understand why my father is doing this to me. Suddenly, as he's complaining, and he's wondering why in the world his father is doing this to him, he realizes that his brother's boat, way ahead of him, stops. His brother's like, what's going on? He goes, checks the engine or whatever he has to check, and he realizes 
that there's no gas in this boat. And if there's no gas in the boat, and there ain't no gas station in the middle of the ocean, he's stuck. So he realizes, what are we going to do? And all his friends are like, how are we going to get out of this? By the time they're going to get out of the situation, the other brothers are going to get there. So we have one out, we have two to go. The other brother on the sailboat is relaxing, all going good for him. And suddenly he realizes something's wrong. He opens up one eye, he notices his boat is not moving either. And he realizes that his boat is not moving because there's no winds. So it's blowing the, the boat. There's no winds pushing. How in the world is he going to get to the island? It wasn't such a windy day. And then, now you have that one kid who's striving and pushing and exerting himself. He's not depending on external forces, like the brother who's sitting on that sailboat. He's not depending on the gas. It all depends on him now. And he goes for hours upon hours, but at the end of the day, he makes it to the island and he realizes, my father was so brilliant. My father knew what he's doing all along. And all the riches, all the diamonds, and all the jewels, and all the cash, everything was there for him, waiting for him, to just to cash it out and just to enjoy and he realized that his father set up his brothers. He knew that he's not going to put enough gas. And most of the gas his older brother used on, you know, circling around him and uh, having fun. And at the end of the day, the, his father knew there's not going to be enough wind. That it's not enough of a windy day for his other brother to get to the island first. And then he made it first. Now, listen up. Because this story is talking to all of us. You see, there are three types of lives. Three types of people that go through this world. There's one who feels that this world is all about the materialism. It's all about living it up, partying it out try to get as much materialism, pleasure, physicality out of this world, and they neglect the spiritual aspects of this world. They forget they came here for a purpose. They, came, they forget they come here for a mission. And they neglect it. And they go their whole life, try to grab onto as much as they can, as much physicality, as much materialism. And again, the one with the best car, the one with the best house, in the end is the winner. But towards their old age, they look back and they realize, what did I accomplish? I mean, here I am at my old age, at some point you run out of gas. And you can't party the way you used to when you were younger. You can't do the things that you used to. You can't go on vacations the way you used to. And he realizes, where did my life lead me to? And then you have the other brother, who's no different than the, the first one, who also lives a life of just taking it easy and relaxing. And he's, no, he's, no, he's not interested in pushing himself or working on his midot and bending his nature no more than his older brother. And he also takes his life very easily. And he thinks that, you know, I don't have to try so, so hard to fight for my relationship with God, I have, to, I have to try too hard to fight for what's right. He just takes it easy and life just move, moves out for him. He doesn't think too much into his purpose. And then there's that one brother, that one child of Hashem, who strives and he pushes and he exerts himself as much as he can. He does whatever it takes to come close to Hashem. And he pushes, and Hashem created a system in this world where those who, who push themselves, where those who want a relationship with God, are the ones who end up, end up winning. The ones who don't give up, the ones who keep going and they keep pushing and they keep striving and in the end, those are the ones who end up making it. Hashem says, if you want a relationship with me in the end, you live a life of meaning, in the end you live a life of purpose and that's ultimately what this world is all about. And Hashem says, not only are you going to enjoy the reward that's awaiting for you in the next world, but don't forget about the reward that you'll get in this world. The reward is that you're going to have such a relationship with God uh, that pleasure of just having a relationship with God is undefeated. And it's such a pleasure that you can never get from anything else.